Hi guys, Sonia here from The Art of Stamping with my first card making tutorial after a long while. Today I want to show you how you can stretch your stamps and make the most of your smaller accessory images. A few days ago I shared a close-up of the new summer release by Purple Onion Designs and there are quite a few adorable critter images in the two new collections and I really really love them all. Nonetheless, today I decided to set them aside and concentrate on some of the smaller accessory stamps in the set to make my own pattern paper with them. I start by arranging the images I chose in my MISTI and stamp them with my favorite things, hybrid ink in black licorice onto watercolor cardstock. I'm choosing watercolor cardstock because I plan to color the images with a combination of clean color brush pens and distress ink. And MFT's Hybrid Ink has become my go-to for almost all outline stamping I do because it's Copic and watercolor safe and you can of course also use it with colored pencils. So basically you can never go wrong using this ink, even if you change your mind about what coloring medium you want to use after you did your stamping. And now I start coloring. The whole process took me about an hour, that's why I heavily speeded this video up. I know that a lot of you love to see the whole process, so I decided I won't edit anything out. But please leave me a comment if you'd rather love to see less of the coloring and in return see bits of it in real time. I'll then be taking this into account when I do future videos. As I told you in the beginning, I'm working with the clean color brush markers here. Only for the beach chair, which I'm going to color in red, I use an Akashia Sai marker, because all of the red zigs tend to turn rather pinkish when they're diluted with water. I chose rainbow colors as my color scheme because I love rainbows and I think those bright colors are just perfect for a summer card. The coloring itself is rather simple and that's what I love about cards like these. On such a card there is no directional light because you don't have a single light source here as you would have when coloring a scene for example. So I can basically color all images separately. I only have to stay consistent with the shadow placement within the images themselves. That means when I color an umbrella and place the shadows in one segment of the shade in the bottom right corner, I do the same when I color the other segments, otherwise the image might look a bit strange in the end. As I'm often asked about the brushes I'm using, for this card I've been working with Cosmo Top Spin Round Brushes by Da Vinci in sizes 2, 4 and 8. These are synthetic brushes and I prefer them when I color small images or want to do more detailed watercoloring because they are slightly harder than real hair brushes which allows for a bit more control when coloring. Well, that's basically all I can say about my coloring concerning the images. So I'll be playing some music now and come back to you when I start putting color to the background. So now all images are colored, I start working on my background. As it is a beach scene, I opted for a sandy color and chose antique linen distress ink, which gives a very light brown color that does not distract too much from the bright rainbow colors of the other elements. I'm applying two light layers of color with a large brush, which helps me to keep the background real loose and a bit messy, which is the look I'm going for here to create a contrast to the more detailed colored images. And after all the coloring is finished, I'm finally putting the finishing touches to my card. 
First I die cut my colored piece with a stitched rectangle die to give it a bit of interest and set it off against the cream colored card base I prepared. After that I stamp my greeting on a piece of dark brown cardstock using Versamark ink and heat emboss it in white. I opted for a dark brown cardstock instead of a black one because it gives a softer contrast to the light brown beach background. I cut down the cardstock with my greeting to a small stripe and arrange it on my die cut panel. And because I love most of my cards to have some shimmer or shine, I add a few clear sequins to my design. They also remind me of reflecting sand grains in the sun, so I think that even thematically they are a good match to my card. To finish off my card I add foam tape to my panel and adhere it to my card base. And that's it! Thanks for watching! Should you have any questions or remarks, just comment on my blog or in the YouTube section below. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of what I do in card making. Have a nice day! Bye!